typically whenever I'm teaching any class, one of the first things I like to teach my students is the proper order to do things is ready, aim, fire. And the way that translates into web design is we're going to start by creating a wireframe. And then in our next step, we're going to work on a storyboard, sometimes referred to as a digital comp. Storyboards include colors and basic graphics. So that's what takes, separates them from a wireframe. A wireframe is usually in grayscale. And we'll gather our assets, which include images and copy, otherwise known as text. And our final step will be to um, actually create the page. So that's the ready, aim, fire. Now, often students will create their page first and go back and do these other things, and that makes no sense at all. This is the correct order to build a page in. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to, and I'll kill this one I've been practicing, create a wireframe. And a wireframe is like a blueprint for a house. We're going to do this in Photoshop. You'll notice I'm a little rusty with Photoshop. Normally I used to do this in Fireworks and that was a preferred tool, but Adobe is not moving forward with Fireworks and Creative Cloud. So I'm going to learn a new tool to do this. And we're going to create a new wireframe and I'm going to call it widgets because that's going to be my fake company is going to be selling widgets. And I'm going to hit OK. My width is, 100, is 1024 pixels by 768. That's not a bad start. And usually I will set this background color to white or black. Um, and then I'm going to draw boxes on it. And each box is going to re represent a div. So I'm going to make it all in a gray scale. So I'm going to pick a shade of gray and hit OK. And I'm going to select my rectangle tool. And I'm going to set it at 960 pixels wide, which is a very common um, width for a container and my height is going to be 750. I'm going to hit OK and then I'm going to sort of drag it into place. And you'll notice I've got my rulers up and I'm in pixels here. And I'm basically just trying to kind of center it. I could go all out and perfectly center it. Don't really need to for what I'm doing. And then I like to name my layers. And when I'm done with them, I will typically lock them. Okay, my next step is going to be to create a header. And you can either do that with a little bit of the um, container showing around it or without. Typically, could go either way. I'm going to leave about a five pixel margin um, just so that you can see that it's different. I'm going to pick a lighter shade of gray here and I'm going to select a box and I'm going to make it 950 wide by 120 pixels tall. Drop that in. Not really happy with the fill there. Let's make it even lighter. Okay, that's pretty good. And then I'm going to move it to where the header would be. And I'm using my arrow keys to sort of put it in here. So that's going to represent the header. And again, these are the names that the divs would have. Okay, and again, I can lock that. And I'm going to create a new rectangle. Again, I'm going to make it 950. The footer is going to be shorter. We're going to make it by 90. I'm going to hit OK. I'm fine with that color. And this is just, again, representing. This helps me know how I'm going to set up my header, my footer, all the different parts. So these represent the divs when you're doing your programming. 
So this is going to be footer. And for your assignment, you're going to create the exact same thing for the first one. You're going to have a project where you create your own wireframes. This is just learning how to do it. So you're going to make the same one that I'm doing. So I'm doing a two column design with a header and footer. So I'm going to put in another one here and I'm going to have it be 160 pixels wide and I'm going to make it now I actually have to do math. I'm trying to remember what I've picked so far. Let's say 600 pixels, and that's probably not going to be quite right, but let's see what that looks like. Normally I would do this with a piece of paper and actually figure out the math. Okay, so that is not the right size. So I would want to show the transform controls, and then I'll just sort of slide it into place. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, and then I would have, so this would be like my sidebar or nav section. Get that off Apply transformation. And so I'm going to call that sidebar. I'm going to go ahead and lock it. I'm going to go ahead and lock the footer. I'll put more stuff on top of them, but I won't go back into those again. And then I'm going to put in a new rectangle, and that's going to be um, 820 by 570 is a place to start. Move it into place. Set up transform controls. And there you go. That represents my divs. And so this I would call main content or main. And those would become my div IDs. And I do find sometimes it's handy to um, Grab these all and put them into a folder. I thought that would work. I tend to like to organize these well, and those would be my divs. And so now I have my various content. Okay, so in here, I'm going to represent different things in different ways. I'm going to typically work with lines and rectangles mostly. Now you can use text. So if you know what your header is going to be or what your text is going to be, um, I'm not really worried about fonts at this point. I typically do everything in Verdana because that's normal. Regular is fine. You can also do bold potentially. And so I might call this Wally's Widgets. That's the name of my company. This is really about placement. Now I want, might want to put in basic buttons, and we're not really worried about the shape of the buttons here, just what they're going to be. So I may put in another rectangle here. Or if I want it to look a little bit more button-like, I might do rounded rectangles. And these would represent buttons. I'm actually kind of okay with that. And then I might and what I did there was I used alt 
and an arrow key to duplicate. Alt arrow. So I might put four buttons here and I would take a little bit more time on the alignment. I'm going to put them basically where I want them to go. So I would space them out appropriately to where I want them. And you could take more time and get them really perfectly aligned if you wished. Not really super critical. I'm just looking for basic placement that these are going to be buttons. And for real navigation, I'd go a step further and I would actually put text in these. Let's try 12 point font and we'll say home and then I'd want to sort of move that okay and again you're going to flatten this you're not going to actually take these out this way so um, I would include text So you'll notice here that I have stopped the video and fast forwarded. I was having a little bit of problems with getting my buttons to work. I was putting the text behind the button symbols on accident. You can see what's going on there. What I want you to do for this portion is to create four button shapes, put text on top of them that is labeled the same way that I have them labeled here with home products, contact, etc., so that you can have it represent the buttons that you would have in a web page. Contact. All right, so those would be my buttons. And again, you could block these. Not a bad idea. You could arrange them into folders, whatever you need to do. So you'll have these make them look a little better than mine if you'd like. I'm just trying to show in this where things would go. So the next thing I would do would be to add an image. And you represent an image typically by putting in a rectangle or square. And usually it's going to have uh, white fill. I do typically put a black stroke on this. And three points is fine. And then I will typically put into the square I'll use my line tool, which should have no fill, black stroke, three points, it's all fine. And you typically draw an X, and that represents an image. I used a command G to group those. I'm on a Mac. And so that represents an image. And then these are actual words. Now, if you know your links, if you had local links, you could put them in here. Or you could just say link. And then you might make that a little bigger. I 
and I'm using my alt and my arrow keys to make copies. Now, if you know what these links are going to be, it's okay to put in the actual words. For this one, it's just a sample that we're going to have links here. In the footer, I would usually put an address. One o two Main Street. Any town I L. So, oh, 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 and you might put a site map or contact, whatever you're going to put down here, um, contact information, email, various things. And then I'm representative here in the main part of the page. I might take this group here. And copy it. And then I can move that, and that would become an image elsewhere on the page. And then so you can represent one or more images that you would be placing on your page. So I usually, rather than creating another image, I will just drag in more. So I might have a couple images here. And then for text, text I usually represent just with lines. And I will just draw lines that are representative And the shift key helps you with this. Not the easiest with a touchpad on a laptop, but it'll work okay. And you should take a little bit of time to go at the end and straighten and align these. But these are just representing paragraphs. Some people use Greek lettering. I don't even like to get into that at this point. I'm just representing these lines represent where text would go. Not a bad idea to select these lines. And it made it all as one shape. I'm okay with that. Um, you could neaten these up if you wanted. Not super big deal at this point. But that represents my paragraphs. So I have basically a wireframe here showing you this would be text. An image would go here. An image would go here. An image, typically an icon, would go here. Your buttons would be here with the appropriate text in them. Appropriate text for the footer links would go here. And this is what you would take to your client and you would get them to sign off on this is how I want things placed on this page. And you would do usually one for each type of page that you would have. So you might have 15 product pages. They'd all be laid out pre pretty much the same way. You do one wireframe representing product pages and then you'd make each one off of the same basis. So I'm going to save this. And that's fine. I'm going to save it as widgets.